Continuing here. Yeah, you know, Alex Jones, you could be so much more effective. You know, you're given your enemies, your adversary, your nemesis, however you see these evil people you, you always talk about and expose. Look, you could be so much more effective if you stayed cool, calm, and collected. But apparently, you, you know, that's you're too weak. You, you, that doesn't seem to be in your constitution because you're not able to do it. Every, all the advice you're getting from people far greater men than myself that are telling you these things, and you're not listening, people like your dad even. I mean, if you're not going to listen to your own dad, and what ulterior motive could he have for giving you that advice of just chill out, man, just cool your jets a bit? That's all he's saying, man. Okay, you're, you'd be so much more effective. That is what your enemies... They're not afraid of you the way you are. You're a loose cannon, man. You're just, you know, you're, you're, you're just behaving like a nut. So they're able to discredit you really easily, man, when you just start ranting and raving and, you know, talking about people's height and, you know, little Marco Rubio. Dude, I mean, your own supporters are going to start losing support when you talk like that. Don't you understand? It's not helping. Trump's going to want to distance himself. You don't even hear Trump. I don't know. Maybe, you know, he made some reference. Look, people say stupid things, and it goes back to what Jesus taught about this. It's not what goes in a man's mouth that defiles him. It's what comes out. Read, for God's sake, the love of God. Please read chapter 3 in the book of James. Okay, this advice is golden, man. Okay, it is it is primo. Okay, we've got to tame the tongue. We've got to at least try. And when we fail, we've got to admit it. I fail. I mean, I talk stupid sometimes. I, I look. That's what happens. A guy that's been alone too long, like myself. Okay, it's not a good thing. Even the Bible says that it's not good for a man to be alone. So being a bachelor. Uh, is what it is and there's no such thing as being self-satisfied and men are much more needy than women and the evidence shows it by 25 percent of men only are single above 50 and half of women above 50 are single they do a much better job okay there that's why i think they're more evolved creatures one of the reasons one of the many reasons but you know i'm hung up and i say some stupid things regarding the female of the species and I, I can't help it. I'm a little stupid about these things, I guess. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons my wife couldn't handle being me, uh, being with me. But, you know, I've always been basically the same guy. I go back to being a teenager, and I've always had this, this hatred for injustice, okay? And it's okay to have hatred because it's not a, a, a living being. I just hate injustice. And I've been watching this thing since I was a little boy. We're going back to five years old, the assassination of JFK. I know all about the evil in the land. Okay, I'm very well aware of what's going on here and how they're carrying out this evil plan to destroy America. They're taking our freedom. We've been losing more and more freedom. And for people like Alex Jones or anybody else to get out there and just keep waving the flag saying, still the best house in a bad neighborhood, that's why everybody wants to come here. Look. You don't know. You haven't lived everywhere in the world. There's a lot of countries people aren't leaving out there. Okay, there's a lot of places people are pretty satisfied with their homeland. A lot of them. A lot of them they're not, and a lot of them are because we, the United, well, certain elements in America have caused problems, destabilized areas, because they don't want things to work. They don't want true socialism to work anywhere. So who's screwing it up? Is are the good socialists screwing it up? That's like shooting themselves. Why would I do that? No, they just believe that they're egalitarians. They believe they're the good guys. They believe that they're the blue-collar, working-class, downtrodden, you know, party or you know, belief in in socialism. They don't understand. So you've got to get it through to them in a way they can understand. We all need to be empowered with the truth. Okay, the truth is, is that we we don't really have any form of capitalism in America, or socialism that's good socialism, egalitarian type. Not at all, man. It's against both of us. It's against conservatives. It's against liberals. Your cost of your taxes going up. You're creeping socialism as just, you know, throw a few crumbs in there. They, they, they're, you know, balancing it. They're trying to make sure that there's not an uprising where people unify and they get it. They don't want people to get it. They don't want Alex Jones to be cool, calm, and collected. And to talk to Mar Marco Rubio respectfully. To talk to that guy, whatever his name is, that's running the CNN, or he's got a lot of executive influence in CNN, and 
you know, he, they don't want you to be cool, calm, and collected and to make your point and to really be able to stand to these people and say, look, and refute them, just exposing them and refuting what they're saying. I mean, you exposing that they're taking money from this guy that at 14 he was collaborating with the Nazis and taking their stuff and said it was a good time of his life. He enjoyed what he was doing. But he was just a child at 14, which is bull. Everybody at 14, I mean, that's that border, right? Like the Jews believe and a lot of people believe. I mean, I'd say right on that border, you're at the age of accountability when you've got to say, you know what? But in retrospect, what I did was wrong. Even if you did something wrong at 14, you've got to at least admit that it was wrong. And if you had another chance, you wouldn't do that thing that you did, right? We've all got to do that because even at 14, we put all, and I'm one of them, that can remember doing some things that I'm not proud of. Quite the contrary. Do you understand? So, you know, let's just be real. Let's be honest. And if we're all just honest, okay, if you're a good socialist, you're a good capitalist, you're a good Republican, you're a good Democrat, you're a good capitalist, you're, you're a good uh, conservative, you're a good liberal, whatever. It, I'm just saying, if you're for real, you're for real. Be all that you can be, be true to yourself, commune with God, have literal spiritual intercourse, accept the information, because if you ask for knowledge and wisdom of these matters, and what is the right belief to hold, the right opinion to have, the right credos and philosophies to embrace, it's not hidden from us. It's got to be out there in the open. That's the way God works, and that's the way we've all got to work. We can defeat these evildoers, but we've got to be unified. We've got to understand it's a small bunch of people. The 08 bailout, it was 10% of Americans that were for the bailout. 10%. 90% were against it. Do you understand? So what division? What are we talking about here? If that 90% came together against these people, I mean, you know, we could stand against them. But the way it stands right now, we can't. Uh, we're divided, but de intentionally, deliberately, and it just seems like it's getting worse. The devil's in the detail, and nobody can just shut themselves up and uh, you know long enough to listen to the other guy and say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, we've got way more in common than we do not in common." And when the devil is in the details of this thing, this division. God, and you know, for me to look at this thing and all these people bickering and fighting with them, thinking, God, I just want to sit them all down and have them come to Jesus and scold them like a good parent would and discipline them and tell them what's what. And don't you understand? You're all demon possessed, man. Don't step back from this. Do Are you willing that they be set free? Yes. Are you willing that they be set free? Yes. Okay. You're on the same page. Now we got to conquer that 10% and get America back. And Trump's trying to help us. God is trying to help us. We need to help ourselves as individuals and help the collective family of humanity, of America. If we're going to help the family of man, we got to help this country first and set a good example. Come on, folks. Let's get together. Let's get it together. Okay? Get our act together. And get on the same page and work together as one force against these evil people. Let's stay cool, calm, and collected and still expose them. And this is what they really don't want to figure out. Like Churchill said, stay close to your friends but even closer to your enemies. That's the spirit with which we need to approach this thing. Okay, that's the only one that's going to work. It's the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. The counselor, listen to the counselor. Now, I'm going to go on to some current events from this past week. You know, Alex Jones, he talks about this great tr uh, growth rate. Oh, we're at 4% or, you know, over. Nobody said it could be done. And I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. I know a lot about economics. Growth rate? I mean, what does that mean? That, that we're producing more, so we're going to have a higher GDP, and we're getting the debt paid? Okay, if that's what he's talking about, that's fine. He's talking about the GDP, right? Gross domestic product. Growth rate, right? <laughs> maybe but you know this is very important that we get out from under this debt get America in the black and remember it, this is what Trump's trying to do and it, the forces against him are powerful still but they're losing their power they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and that's a good thing but uh, you know let's you know let him explain what he's talking about when he talks about these things 
because the layman often they don't you throw that out there and they're like oh he's trying to talk over my head or he he's right about everything i'm not going to question it and the growth rate is good and all this look this is good jobs and all this stuff but you know at the end of the day the most important thing is that we have sound economic policies which would translate of course to sound currency okay automatically if you had sound economic policy you could have sound money so instead of it being debased the opposite is going to happen it's going to increase in worth debasement is not a fancy word it just means deworthment of the currency so this is what we got to focus on forget about the numbers how many numbers you have you won't care about how many numbers you have your pay could go down and as long as your currency is going up in worth faster than your pay is going down hey who cares so you know it's a two-way street here I'm just saying, I'm not just saying, well, you know, we got to just keep giving raises to keep up with it. And, you know, this is the answer. That would have been, but that ship sailed. The Labor Department has been profoundly, utterly remiss, no, deliberately remiss for decades now. And, you know, we could do the math, but minimum wage has been proven to be over 40 bucks an hour on average. Minimum, minimum, bare bones, by law, minimum wage would be to be commensurate with like a dollar an hour in the mid 1960s. That's that's the math. There I'm not that's barely that's not even hyperbolic, okay? I'm not exaggerating that. That those are the mathematical facts that are irrefutable, inarguable. So, you know what? How that's what I mean by the ship has sailed. Are you you think we're going to get minimum wage up to 40 something an hour? By then what would they be the inflation? They want to blame the minimum wage workers for cost of living inflation. You understand the madness? I mean, it, that madness is rife. It's palpable. You could cut it with a freaking knife. We're so effed up in the head, man, by these evil people that have done this to us, disempowered us, made us stupid and confused, ignorant about these issues. They don't want you empowered. Knowledge is power. If you understand these truths I'm conveying, you'll be empowered. Nobody can refute the things you teach and tell them and that's powerful man you don't need to rant and rave just have a conversation with somebody and when you re you know you've exposed them for being stupid and ignorant and confused about these issues or flat out lying evil idiots okay one of the others it's going to come to come to the surface and then you're going to be vindicated even though the stuff you say sounds wild because it's a departure from the norm from the status quo establishmentarian method of thinking we, we, we've all been trained. We're all effed up in the head because we've been going along with this training for decades. So this Overton window has been moved very diabolically, very cunningly, sneakily, stealthily. They've done this to us. And he, so I'm just saying, look, we can do this because God can empower us to do it. But that's the only way. It's going to be with God's help that we're going to come together and unify as conservatives and liberals and socialists and capitalists. All good, all good people that want good for humanity and Democrats and Republicans. And we're going to defy these evil people who don't care what you are. They don't care if you're a socialist or a capitalist. They don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. They don't care if you're a conservative or a liberal. They just want to continue maintaining control. That's why they've got to always throw mud in the water and divert your attention. Just don't focus on us. Don't unify and don't focus on us. We don't care if you rant and rave like Alex Jones and look like some conspiracy theorist nut job. Okay, they don't care about, they want that. They want, they got your number then. So that's why Jesus said, love your enemy, because they want the opposite. Okay, because when you hate your enemy, it's like showering them with potpourri and flowers and chocolates. Okay, that's what it's like by default. Because like King Solomon said, when you truly love your enemy from your heart, you really care about evil people. <laughs> about them repenting or perishing and you're you're the good watchman on the tower warning them because you don't want their blood on your hands or your head and you just try to be God's friend and servant and you know knowing that God wants to save the uttermost that God doesn't delight in the destruction of the wicked he wishes all to come to repentance and to be saved okay and you're just trying to be that servant that good servant out there loving your enemies and still they're going to hate you they're going to hate you. It's like pouring hot coals over their heads, spraying them with, uh, pouring uh, holy water on them that they don't want, doing surgery on them that they don't want. Okay, so it's powerful, man. It's super duper powerful, but you got to cut through the crap of confusion. And that's what they've done. They've muddied the waters, muddied and bloodied them, and it's very serious. It's a very grave issue of our survival as a species. 
And if we're going to set an example for other nations, they're looking to us to damn well do it. Put our feet, our collective feet down as Americans and just demand justice in the land. Get it together. Start fixing the damn problems. Stop skirting the issues. Stop putting temporary fixes on the problems that just make the problem worse. Like the analogy I've used. It's like you take $50 billion a year going into Section 8 housing, supposed to house those that can't afford to house themselves. And the homeless problem has just gotten worse. The problem of unaffordable housing has gone the worst, gotten worse. And the answer is just to pour more money into it. That's like saying you got a, a gas tank in your car with a hole in it. And you see the, it, the gasoline just pouring out. You say, hey, we got a hole. We got to fix the hole. So the gas stops pouring out. We actually fill the tank up. We fix the problem. They don't want that. So the answer is just pour more in. And all that pouring more in does is erodes the hole and the hole gets bigger. And it starts gushing out. The answer is just pour it in faster and faster.